What up, peeps? Tony Baker here, back with another movie review. This time I'm reviewing Bumblebee, okay? The latest Transformers movie. This is, I think, Transformer movie number five? Six? Now, I can't even keep track. So you got Transformers, you got Transformers, Dark Side of the Moon, Transformers, you know, we keep it real in the hood. Transformers, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Uh, Transformers 17, you got Transformers Redemption, Transformers Revenge, Transformers Return of the King, Transformers in the Two Towers, Transformers Reloaded, Transformers Inception, Transformer The Dark Knight Rises, and now we got Bumblebee. The Michael Bay Transformers were pretty much disastrous. Like they got worse every time. Like it was like the first one was cool. It was like, yo, we've never seen this. Oh, Transformers in the real world. We were excited. And Shia LaBeouf, he wasn't annoying at that time. So we were all in. And then after that, it was like, all right. Then the second one, you had the coon bots, the just the, the, the black stereotype Transformers. They were distracting. And then the third one, everything just got more and more ridiculous as the Transformers went on. And the Michael Bay action sequences, we couldn't see what was going on. I could not keep track of the action in the Transformers movie. I was like, I don't know what just transpired. The robots look like real junky and metally and scrap heapy. I mean, they are Transformers, but still they didn't look smooth at all. Now we got Bumblebee and I feel like they scaled it back. They scaled it back. They went back in time, first of all. They went back to 1987, which is the, the real time frame of the Transformers I grew up on, okay? So they scaled everything back, which I appreciated. So now the robots look like who I grew up watching. Like when they were on Cybertron, I was like, yo, this is how they look in the cartoon. Finally, that's all I asked. That's all I asked, that's all I wanted. Okay, Bumblebee stars Haley Stanfield and John Cena. It's about, you know, set in 87. This girl finds, you know, a Volkswagen bug, a yellow one, in the scrapyard. You know, Bumblebee, he escaped from Cybertron. They sent him to Earth to be like, all right, go to Earth, hold it down. The rest of the Autobots will connect, you know, so we'll we'll hide from the Decepticons there. Bumblebee gets to Earth, he gets in the battle, he loses his memory, or his memory files, you know what I mean, he's a robot, he's a machine. And so he, he pretty much had amnesia and he was like dormant for a while. So the girl gets the car, you know, and then they become friends, it's like, you know, Bumblebee's not sure what's going on, but they still become friends. And it's like, at the same time, he's being hunted by the Decepticons he tried to escape from. And John Cena is the military badass that's on the scene as well. So that's pretty much the gist of it. A lot of good 80s music touched my soul. Cause you know, I was born in 77, the 80s was all me. So I was like, yes, in 87, I was 10 years old. So this was right up my alley. But I will say, you know, the movie had its flaws. It was mad cheesy, mad corny. It kind of forced a potential love interest in there. Look, let me, let me tell you, let me tell y'all some as filmmakers. You don't have to have a love interest in every movie for it to work. We don't always need that element, okay? We don't need it. You can have this girl lead the film. She's just not feeling anybody at that present time. Okay, that's, and that's all right. You know, you don't always need a love interest in every story. We don't always need it. We get it. It's two attractive people on a mission together. Guess what? They might not hook up in real life. And that's okay. Stop forcing it. And it felt very 80s like. It was like, let me hide this from mom. You know, it was like the 80s, mopeds. You know what I'm saying? The, the bullies at school, it was like the hair. I was like, all right, 80s, you know, the cold heartedness. But it still kind of lacked the edge of the 80s. Cause even though the 80s was like corny and soft and over the top, they still had edge to it, you know what I mean? I remember the movie Monster Squad, super edgy. Like they were smoking. I was like, wow, this is good to do this today. You know what I'm saying? Man, smoking gives you cancer, which it does, but still in the 80s, nobody cared. And in that regard, it was cool. Like you could see the action. Like you could see every move Bumblebee was doing. So I appreciated the scale back. So now we can see the action and take it in. But it was it was still kind of soft, kind of, it did have a made for TV vibe. It did have that. It was like, all right, I could see this on NBC on a Sunday night in the 80s with the commercial breaks. But it was still enjoyable, it was entertaining. It was better than Transformers 2 through 17. I still can't even remember how many Transformers there are. But I would put it on par with like the first one. One of the takeaways in Transformers is 
It always killed me in movies where the house gets trashed, like completely and utterly trashed. And then the parents come home, what the hell is this? And they never show the fix up. They never show what the parents have to do to fix the house back. Thousands of dollars of damage was just done inside this house. Your insurance is not gonna cover it. I need, I need to see that. I need to see how this gets rectified. Even if your life is on, even, let's say my son, he's trying to save the world from Decepticons. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you made it through all that safe. But somebody got to clean up this goddamn house when you save the world. That's great, no, that's great. We avoided a war, but this house looked like a battlefield. And I'm not about to clean it up while you out here running around with Bumblebee. I want answers. Second takeaway is stop killing off Autobot characters in these movies, man. They keep killing off the Autobots I grew up with. In the first Transformer, they killed Jazz like he was nothing. They killed Ironhide, they killed Ratchet. They keep killing off these main characters. The only, the only Autobots that have been safe are Optimus Prime and Bumblebee. Stop killing off the rest of them, man. I'm sick of it. The Decepticons out here living their best lives. With the Autobots just getting murdered, I'm, I'm sick. This is my childhood you're murdering right here. But anyway, y'all want to know the smooth jazz review of Bumblebee. Well, here it is. Oh, yeah. I'm giving Bumblebee three saxophones out of five. <laughs> Watch me transform, and then, then when I transform, it'll just be me facing the other way. That's all I could really transform into. But if you got the noise, it would be dope because it's like I really, you know what, just forget it. All right, peeps, that's my review of Transformers. I mean, my bad, Bumblebee. <laughs> that's my review of Bumblebee, man. Other movies like this, Transformers the movie, the animated one. That's a must see, okay? And then I guess the first Transformers. The rest of them you could just skip, all right? Don't forget, man, let me know what you thought about Bumblebee in the comment section below. Do you want to see it? Have you seen it? Did you like it? Where do you rank it amongst the other ones? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as usual, we out here.